Hi, I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community. A little over 10 years ago now, Tom and Linda Bozak had an idea. They'd heard from a friend that the FCC, which is the Federal Communications Commission, had opened a rare window for applications to get a low-power FM radio station construction permit. They convinced a few of their friends that this was a great opportunity, and the rest, as they say, is history. KCIWLP went on the air in January of, I think it was 2017. Um, wow, seems like forever ago. And there's a tremendous amount of work that's involved in starting a nonprofit, all volunteer community radio station, and just as much to keep one going. My guest today knows all about this subject. He also has a community radio station just across the California border in Crescent City. KFUD. Welcome to the show, Paul Kritz. Thank you for having me, Candace. It's good to be here. Oh, it's so nice to see you. And it's a beautiful day out there. The drive up here was just Unbelievable. magnificent. Yeah. I know. I mean, yesterday and the day before and today are summer. Right, we're having, right. Yeah. We're having, we're, th- Enjoy this it. is our summer, <laughs> yeah. right? Because <laughs> I think the rain starts again on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm but, not thinking about that. I know. But, and maybe it won't be a really long rain, right? I Who mean, knows? we're kind of moving towards the end of the... Just one day at a time. Everybody sweats it every year when the rain starts. It's like the first time it's ever rained. And I'm just, you know, <laughs> let's just have today and we'll go on. And, and But I was I was ready for the sun and it's been nice to enjoy the yeah, last few days. Yeah. I, I believe that I was saying last week that things were getting a little bit dicey yeah. at my house. <laughs> I was probably going to kill somebody <laughs> if I didn't get some sunshine. And my dogs, my dogs are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're, they're both Labrador retrievers. Oh, okay. They're water dogs. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So the rain is coming horizontal, you know, and I tell this story all the time because to me it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Here we've got these water dogs that should be like just jumping out and playing in the puddles and everything. The rain's coming horizontally against the slider and we walk out under the blast in front porch and I go, okay, girls, you can do it. All right. It, it is raining out there, but you can do it. And I open the door and the rain is hitting them in the <laughs> face. Right. And they look at me and like, it's no. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What I have a little. I have a little this? wire-haired terrier. Does the same thing. Just has really? to look out the door first, and will look at me like, "No, I know, <laughs> go back right? inside." Like, okay, respect. I, I get it. Here. Exactly. If you won't do it, you won't do it. <laughs> Although I have gotten to the point now where, if I think it's really important that they do go out and do their business, because yeah. like we're going to go to bed or something, right? I will put my fluorescent yellow raincoat over top of my nightgown mm-hmm. and my big boots on my feet and we'll go out in the yard Lead and I'll away. stand in the rain <laughs> while they do what they need to <laughs> like do. Some sort of biblical crossing guard out oh, there and all of that. God, right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I keep expecting them, you know, like there to be a skunk out there or something because that would just be, I mean, that would be horrible, uh-huh. right? But yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, we're we're actually having summer, which is Amazing. It is beautiful. And yes. Yeah. We'll mm-hmm. last a few more days. And then, of course, the grass is also growing, which is a problem. But I know. I had to go. I bought a lawnmower, actually. <laughs> we were, we were, I thought we would make it for a little while. Why? No, no, I know. No. You can no, hear no, it no. growing right now. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I had to do that. I saw a push one at Weimar <laughs> the other day. And I thought, you know, because I don't have much grass. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, mostly put plants, hydrangeas, and roadies sure. and stuff in there. But I do have some grass, and it's like, I don't want to get an electric mower or gas mower. I should just get out there and push. (laughs) (laughs) Haven't done it yet. Haven't done it. (laughs) So, Paul, Mm -hmm. um, first of all, do you have a title? Uh, Where? At KFUG? Yes. Um, No, I don't. I mean, I have all the titles. Excellent. So, that And that was kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have kind of sort of titles around here. Yeah, there's a division of labor here, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, no. mm-hmm. but not so much with you guys. No, huh? no. CEO of the board, of the of the corporation, rather, right. and it's on the board and program and you. station manager and, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. News so, director. Ho- holy moly. 
Yeah, yeah. Because that's a full-time job in and of itself. Well, I've got a lot of help, actually, and that's the one That's the one department I have all the help in, actually, Good. with Redwood Voice yeah. Community News and the yeah. Redwood Voice Youth Team, yeah. So, who are you? Who am I? Yeah, what, how did you... How did you come to be, and how did you come to, <laughs> how did KFUG come to, well, I mean, I know the, you know, the actual biological, right, right, of, sure. you know, but, you know, yeah, so. Uh, uh, born in Fresno, California, uh-huh. 50, almost 57 years ago, next wow. month, and uh, uh, my father moved up here in the early 1980s, moved to Crescent City uh, with his, Why? with his, uh, with his second wife, who was from here, who was born okay. and raised here. And uh, I came first time up and I must have been about 13 or so, 1980, uh-huh. and fell in love with the place the first time. There's a trail in the Redwoods on uh, Howland Hill, uh, which is about a mile from where I live right now. And it's the Nickerson Ranch Trail. And 13 years old, I was walking. I just had never seen it. This is before Star Wars and all that yeah. stuff. I'd never seen anything like that. And maybe a couple of other visits. By the time I was in high school, I knew when I had a family I wanted to be back up here. And so that was always the goal. And then when I had a, I had married after college, uh, my wife and I, my first wife and I moved up to, to Crescent City. That would have been about what, uh, we just, uh, our second child had just been born. So in 2000. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Just always have loved, love the region up here, love yeah. the little town, love the, the nature, all of it. It's been, yeah. it's been kind of my happy place for much of my life. Yeah. I remember when my husband and I first came up here and it, he he was looking to retire, and um, a colleague had told him he should check out Brookings, mm-hmm. Oregon. Well, we were coming from the Bay Area, so it's like we didn't know anything about Brookings, Oregon. I mean, right. Right? But driving through town, it was like, oh, yeah, it's where I want to live. Yeah, yeah. And then when I went to the library, and the librarian is like talking to this customer right in front of her, and she said, you know, Bob, I just forgot your last name there for a minute. Uh, I that's, bingo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's 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 a, yeah. There was there's there's a lot of that in uh, in Crescent City too. There's a, a fellow uh, who's uh, deceased now, Bill Stamps, uh, who started KPOD down there. I believe he began KPOD, mm-hmm. uh, but he was the voice of Crescent City, mm-hmm. and that was the kind of thing you get that on the radio. He yeah. he talked about. He just went down to the post office and what was happening there and who he saw, and he's back in the back in the studio and talking about it. Yeah. And yeah, that's very much a part of the small town thing. And yeah. I think you have to be the right kind of person for these places to, to grab you like that. So yeah, many, and yeah. I think luckily we're lucky. So many people pass through. Yes, and just keep going. And <laughs> well, I don't because mind because there are no malls. Yeah, well, okay. And you know, some people really care about the there are hardly shopping malls, malls left elsewhere too now. So that's <laughs> I know that's so true. <laughs> and it's because people aren't shopping at them. So yeah, hmm, yeah, right? exactly. That's, as long as they work that out, they stay over there. I'm, I'm. Always, you know, the biggest thing in, in one of the biggest things they talk about economically in Del Norte County and Crescent City, the Chamber of Commerce and the Board of Super, everybody's always tourism, tourism, tourism. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, but not really. There's a part of me and I call, I hold it back on the air. I don't let right. it out that much, but you know, no, don't come up here. Don't come up here. Yeah, I don't right. want to see you. I don't want to run into you on the Nickerson Ranch Trail or out at Lake Earl. Right. Just keep moving. Yes. And it's hard to be a, a city booster with that attitude. So I kind of keep that to myself. Yeah, I mean, we do rely on the tourism dollars. Yeah. I mean, I know, but yeah, I'm fine with it the way it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need more. I don't need more tacky hotels. I don't yeah. need more strangers with their uh, not yeah. knowing what's going on. I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't need to run into people I don't know their names. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it know? is fun running into people that you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it used to be that you couldn't. I could not get down a complete aisle at Fred. Oh, right. Yeah. With, yeah. Without running into somebody, mm-hmm. you know, and it would take me literally, if I was going to go grocery shopping, literally two or three hours. Yeah, do a lot. For what's weird is when you're walking down an aisle, this happened, uh, like in Safeway in Crescent City, walking down an aisle with my two uh, school age kids and they're like, you know, preschool, kindergarten, and somebody says hi to them and I don't know them. And they're like, hi. And I'm like, who's that? Oh, that's so-and-so from class, you know, from, from Mary Peacock. And I'm, wow. like, I'm like, okay, yeah. And you can no, trust that's that, nice. you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is nice. I don't think, I don't think there are a lot of other places uh, no. that can happen. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, I grew up in a city, I mean, suburbs of a city, but, yeah. you know, no. I mean, when you went through the line at the grocery store and the checker didn't know your name. Yeah, yeah. And did not 
you know, strike up a conversation. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, here, <laughs> you, it's considered rude mm -hmm, if you're not mm -hmm. talking to the checker. And yeah, she, what's wrong with them today? They're not talking to me. Exactly. I don't get Exactly. <laughs> what's going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had, I had family visit for the first time a, a while ago, and they didn't understand about how checkers will talk to you and start up <laughs> conversations. And it was my sister, and she's like, what? Does she know me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. she does, Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're one of us now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So how did KFUG, how did all of that come about? There was a, a, a fellow who was a character in, uh, in Crescent City in Delaware County. He was a radio guy. His name was Jim Wayman. Uh, Weird Wayman. He was, he was, uh, came from the sixties and, uh, very much what you'd expect from a, a 60s DJ. Not the, not the high-powered boss jock kind of guy, but kind of the, the hippie burnout dropout sort of guy. I love that. Spent a <laughs> lot of his time homeless mm. and uh, had a lot of very serious problems, mm -hmm. but was just one of those born broadcasters. Wow. And I've, I've met people like that mm -hmm. in, in radio, people who just live it. Yep. You know, and you go to their apartment, they have like a line of records along the, along the base of a wall and a and a mattress in the corner and some condiments in the fridge. And that's their, that's where they live because right. they're right. always on the air. Right. And he was like that. He had some, uh, had some other issues too, but uh, a sort of a storied career. Uh, he is, uh, I think he went down in history as uh, the number one DJ ever in the Tampa Bay market. He was, his name on the air was Pepper Lip Syncs. And uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just a really interesting guy. My father knew him. I've known him since I was a teenager. And uh, when I ended up back here uh, as an adult with a family, uh, you know, small town, we run into each other again. And so I just knew him. Uh, he had gotten in a house and uh, was living in a, in a part of Crescent City that was uh, near where I was living. And he had started an online radio stream. And it was uh, that back then it was just KFUG.com. Mm -hmm. And I had done radio previously as a as started as a teenager down in the valley. And I got into, uh, uh, just, okay. You know, at the time I was a photographer with my father. He had, he was sort of the town photographer. This is right at the end of the film era mm -hmm. where there was one guy in town who took everybody's picture and it was my dad. Yep. And I got into that too. And, uh, and then started producing for Jim and KFUG, KFUG.com, uh, a, a show called Night Soil, which was just three hours of me, me doing music and being a DJ again, but doing it at a computer and, and, and giving him the files and, mm -hmm. And he'd, uh, he'd upload it and put it in the stream. And uh, I got more involved with it in that regard because I really liked radio too and, and missed doing it. And um, he, we had gotten into it and I had invested time and some money into the stream and we were thinking about uh, how to make it an actual radio station. And it struck upon the, uh, the part 15 uh, uh, AM, low power AM broadcasting, part 15 compliant, which is, you know, your toaster is part 15 compliant. So low power, you don't need a license. Like really? A tenth of a watt. And if you install AM correctly, you can squeeze some, some distance out of even a tenth of a watt. And we, uh, uh we were, I was starting to kind of scrape money together myself. Uh, he found a roommate, a woman he did not know on Craigslist who moved in with him with all of her furniture and, and within two days, the stream was down because he had given her all of his money and hadn't paid the cable bill. Oh dear. And I'm going, this isn't going to fly. Oh dear. So I had some money set aside because we'd, uh, as photography, uh, as a photographer, we'd gotten the school pictures for oh, no. two years and that was, that just made Yes. It'll kill you. Yes. And, and just like with KFUG, it was just me doing <laughs> yeah. the green screening and the high grading. And it was six weeks of, wow, it was hard. But, you know. And getting those kids to smile. Well, I know half of them. Yeah. It wasn't that difficult, okay. actually. That was the easy part. Okay. Taking the pictures was easy. <laughs> it was going through several thousand pictures. Uh. And right. doing it every night, getting up and showing up at six in the morning and, and, and taking pictures till the end of the school day or, you know, after yeah, lunch. Right. And then being in the studio till midnight, high grading and going through and keep this one, throw this out, keep this. And it was, it was. Oh dear. First year we paid for the equipment that we bought. Second year I had some money left over. Huh? And I, that was when all of this had happened with, with KFUG and with Jim. And so I offered him 
$2,500 to let me have KFUG. And uh, he didn't want to do it. I could tell. And he, I saw the look in his eyes. And, and, you know, that was his baby. That was his thing. Yep. Well, it was kind of becoming my baby too. And this right. was sort of what I'm thinking this is what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. And we have a way forward. Right. And if you're in charge with it, of it, it's not going to happen. Right. And he begrudgingly said, yeah. So I gave him the money and, and he gave me KFUG. And, and then we went ahead and, and went along with the, 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 the uh, Par 15 compliant broadcast. We bought these things called the Range Master AM broadcasting or, or transmitters rather. Uh, three of them scattered around town, uh, connected by phone lines. And I had to explain to the people at Charter what a, a studio to transmitter link was over the phone. And then finally found some old timer and went, oh yeah, we can do that for you. Oh. Wow. And kind of all, it was just such a challenge, but we, we got on the air, I think 2012 as wow. a part 15. Yeah. In April of 2012 as a part 15 compliant AM station and, uh, did that until, uh, until the window opened and then we formed the nonprofit and, and right. applied for the, uh, the low power FM license right. like KCIW has. Okay. So I'm trying to remember when that window, I think it was 2014. I think it was 2013, 2014. It was like we formed the nonprofit at the end of 2013. Yes, so did we. Or the window. So right. yeah, it was right around then. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Fascinating, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had no idea you were doing that. Yeah, I didn't know you were up here doing it either. I mean, 30 <laughs> miles away, right? right? I mean, how bizarre is that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So where were you first located? Because I know that, that Tom and some of the other... Right. Board members went down there early on mm -hmm. and I didn't, I didn't go down, but they said you were on a street, you were in a, um, we're in a store a front. retail. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was on I street in Crescent city, mm -hmm. downtown Crescent city, a uh, very old, old line of building. I actually love that block because yeah. it's one of its original, they, the, the tsunami left it, uh, uh, built in 1927 or 28, wow. I guess. Uh, but yeah, yeah, just a storefront there. That's the last location where the photography studio was. And then I, I shut that down and turned it into a radio station. Then. Wow. And we were set up right in the window. So you're looking right out on the, on the street and people walk by and look at yeah. you. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My dad was a disc jockey on KDKA in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. And every Christmas they would set up in the Horns department store window. <laughs> nice. And, you know, so you'd walk by and there yeah, they'd be, yeah. right, just doing their shows. Mm -hmm. It was fascinating. Yeah, absolutely it was a lot of fun doing that. It was yeah. really fun. So are you, I mean, it sounds like you're the chief bottle washer and brains and everything else. Oh. You make it sound like I do a better job than I do the bottles. <laughs> All the bottles don't get washed necessarily, but yeah. Yeah, now, now. Yeah. You're on the air 24-7 though, aren't you? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. That yeah. to me is a huge accomplishment. Yeah, it, it helps. I live right across the driveway from it right now too. Excellent. So, so when something goes wrong, I'm I'm right there. Right. Which isn't always fun, but. No, no, especially <laughs> if it's three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's raining. Yeah, and, but it know. beats having to drive across town. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, our, uh, <laughs> we have our transmitter in a, a little place about two blocks from here. Mm -hmm. But it's dark and scary, <laughs> you know. So we've gone over a couple of times. I prefer to not go there. Uh, I prefer that, like Tom is the, you know, right. But yeah, it's it's not something I want to do in the middle of the night. No, our, it's in our garage. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good. So you're on the air. Are you? Are you a hundred percent live? Do you do recorded? What do you, we what have? Do you do? We have automated software for for like the overnights because you know there's not a lot of people. My first radio job was midnight to six, mm -hmm. you know, and that's and not a lot of people want to do that, right? And uh, I don't think I'd want people coming and going. It's again right across the driveway from my bedroom. No, exactly. But, uh, uh, for um, we have let's see, I I don't know. Right now, probably about half the time, a live DJ is on the air. And the rest of the time will either be like Pacifica programming or 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 the automated software, which is just playing from uh, from our music library. So to have all of those people showing up to do live shows, I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, we actually we have maybe about a dozen employee or employees, uh, volunteers now, mm -hmm. some employees and and volunteers who do the DJ and work. At one point, we had thirty six 
volunteers when we were downtown. Say we were downtown COVID in probably. the middle of winter. Yeah, yeah, way yeah. back, way back when we first started broadcasting right. the LPFM. Right. Yeah. Yeah, when we first started, we also filled rooms mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. people, right? I mean, there were, you know, our, our first programming meetings, I mean, th we, there were so many people there that we actually had to divide up into groups. Oh, wow. Because nobody else, nobody would be able to speak. Yeah. You know, I mean, it would just be too much, so. Yeah, did COVID in that for you guys? COVID didn't, well, it didn't happen until 2020, so we were, we basically had gotten on the air in 2017. We still had a good number of volunteers and and we were even building up on that mm -hmm. covid hit and we had to shut the the studio down yeah. and and that really i mean it was a learning experience because we learned how to broadcast from our homes mm -hmm. sitting mm -hmm. in front of our computers mm -hmm. which was wow what a learning curve that was yeah yeah but what a gift also because I mean, it taught us that you didn't absolutely have to have a studio to be on the yeah. air. Yeah. Which is... For me, that's not the same. Not yeah. the same experience at all. Oh, it's yeah. not the same experience. No. But, you know, come the deluge or the disaster or yeah. whatever, we are definitely going to have to figure out how to do it differently, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, mm -hmm. right? So, Yeah. What did it for us, it was COVID, what came along with COVID, but we really, we sort of halved our, our volunteer. Um, we had a very conscious and public break with the conservative side of Del Mort because really? of COVID. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, well, of course. Mm -hmm. No. We had, course. Uh, we had the, the, the no maskers and the people who were protesting, you know, the very basic things that we'd been asked to do yeah. for public health. Yeah. And one of our DJs was uh, on the air and, and advising and telling his listeners to ignore public health and to ignore what the public health officer was saying and to violate these, these, I mean, they weren't laws, but these, you know, these suggestions, right. To violate yeah. these things. And they were, he was saying things that in my estimation, not only could, but did result in people dying. Yes. I know. Yes. And, and I had to, I had to kick him off the air. Yeah. And I didn't kick all the other conservatives off the air, but they left. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And right. it kind of clarified things for us at mm -hmm. K-Flug and said, okay, who are we? And I had to sit back and uh, uh, with some other folks, sat back and, and talked about, okay, then then who are we then? Because up until then, we are we are the voice of the community. Right. You know, more so than the, than the commercial stations, which do a wonderful job engaging the community in Delaware County, right. the bi-coastal stations do. I just can't listen to the programming or some of the voices. Yeah. The, uh, but who are we then? Are we going to really reflect this community or are we just now a part of the voice that is Del Norte and, right. and a part with a very specific point of view? And that point of view, because of the way COVID had it all shake out, was, was more liberal, more progressive and uh, and uh, less conservative we didn't have you know we lost the trumpers and and we lost the uh, the people you can still see if you watch a a board of supervisors meeting and they're the same people who get up at every meeting and have yep. the same spiels during the public comment they were on the air yeah. and now they're not yeah. and they haven't been since since covid and i'm okay with that yeah. and that allowed us to to sort of define our own identity much right. more cohesively i think than it was before and it helps that that you are the one making the decisions, yeah, right? I yeah. mean, you don't have to pass it by a board and, Well, you know. there's a board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they'll do what you... They could, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we, we had a, a similar experience, um, only our experience was actually with the city council right. here. Right, yes. <laughs> they, they um, in essence, we, we had been on their tower... Um, when Gary Milliman was the city manager, he had said, would you like to put your antenna on our tower? You know, great place to be broadcasting from. Their emergency operations center is right there. So we were hardwired into the emergency operations center, right? How much more could you ask yeah. for, right? I mean, we've got a we've got a tower there that's not coming down, right? I yeah. mean, it was built to stay. Um, and, and we did great for a few years. And then the... City Council just kept getting more and more conservative and kind of reactionary. And mm -hmm. 
And the next thing we knew, they were basically saying, yeah, we're, you, you're off. You're, you're out of here. Why? The, what were you doing we were that was too alien? Too really? I mean, the, the, the complaint that came out at a meeting, literally, was that um, the then mayor, um, who has since been recalled, <laughs> um, was told by a friend that we were bashing Trump. Now, A, that actually didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a, as a station, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. There may have been, Ray Gary might have done on his music show, he might have said something, okay? Right. But that's one show, one person, you, you know, not definitive mm -hmm. of KCIW. But, you know, they, he decided we should not be on their tower if we were liberals. Wow. I know. Wow. I know. And so all of the emergency operations stuff was like, okay, mm -hmm. really? That's I mean, not as important as, as this political agenda. That right. You know. yeah. Right. It was, it was a little bit, it was a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. but there's nothing to do about it. You know, I mean, you just kind of pick yourself up, dust yourself off and go, okay, well then what's our next step? Yeah. All right. We got to find another tower, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be as good and, you know, we're not going to be as happy, but, and we're probably not going to be able to broadcast an emergency. I mean, wow. there's, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it, very interesting, the whole political. It, what, I don't know, we've gotten, like, so much, because it is a small town. We talked a lot about this at the beginning yep. of this. It, and, and so, even though these, these folks were alienated and, and a big chunk and it was a we made the news the eureka news did a story about us and the whole thing oh, i loved it it was fine yeah because i i wasn't going to back down i'm not afraid of this i believed in what i was right. saying and i believed in what i did and there was you know sure i'll tell anybody why right and it didn't really change anything for us politically and, and this is something i don't know maybe it's a difference between curry and del nort but it, it didn't like the uh the folks we alienated were so far right that even mainstream political entities and folks in 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 Crescent City and Del Norte, they weren't a part of that. Right. You know, it's right. like the, they weren't running the asylum. The folks that we alienated, and so even afterwards, the most the most uh, conservative, you know, board of supervisors, you know, when he's up for when he was up, Roger Gitlin, when he was up mm -hmm. for uh, re-election or had something he needed to say. Yeah, he'd come on. He'd come on KFUG because mm -hmm. we'd talk to him and we'd mm -hmm. talk to him and give him time to talk and to say what he what he'd say. We'd push back. We'd have a conversation, but it sure. was civil always. Right. And and that stayed. Like now, you know, the candidates kind of you know regularly. Okay, there we will go on KFUG because it's the only place where they will go and be interviewed and talk for an hour. Yes. We post it online, right. and they'll you know people will be able to share it and and hear it. And so we have maintained that that kind of voice in in the community uh even post covid but it has like i always assumed and this is sort of a del Norte thing i always assumed things were better up here oh yeah we have we have there's this cultural thing and i think we're getting over it now but there's this there was always this cultural thing about you know brookings was better than us it was it was cleaner it's nicer it's it's just a better place and then Getting more into what happens here politically, I'm like, whoo, no, <laughs> not necessarily. Hold on. Yeah. You know, we can, yeah. we can run into each other in the market in, 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 in Del Norte and still be civil. You know, there, there aren't very many people I'll avoid, you know, it's like, okay. But, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. I was, I was shocked to learn that there was such a, such a reactionary sort of scene that you guys had to face up here. And, and it exists today. Today still, right. I mean, yeah. You know, there, there literally are you know, pickup trucks going up and down Chetco I mean, Avenue with the, with with the flag. The yeah, flags no, we get that and, too. But they, you know, they're not on the city council. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm not sure at this point that any of ours are on the city mm -hmm. council, but they have their ears. Yeah. Wow. And that's you know, I mean, I I have asked the current mayor um, Isaac Hodges a couple of times if he'd like to come on my show and mm -hmm. and just chat and. You know, and absolutely not. Wow. Absolutely not. It's like, okay. I don't understand that. I, I know. don't understand I'm, how. I'm not going to attack you. And right? walking away from dialogue is your answer? That's yeah. just. I know. Uh, yeah. I know. That, that, I don't know what that means. I don't, no. I don't know why. If that just, 
if that just shows kind of an underlying uh, insecurity in the message that they have anyway, I, yeah, you know, and yeah. that's well, easy there's to see definitely a division. I mean, yeah. it it is, you know, <laughs> it's pretty black and white here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty red and blue here. Red, yeah, not, there yeah. ain't much purple. <laughs> I think there's a lot, maybe a lot more that unifies us in in Del Norte County in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and because being in California and and everybody in Del Norte kind of kind of understands how downtrodden we are yep. in in relation to the rest of the state how how little sacramento knows of us so such a stepchild such yes. a stepchild and i think left and right we're all okay we're kind of out here on an island by ourselves yes and that's sort of a unifying thing yeah for Del Norte. yeah and see we also mm -hmm. are you know kind of this island right because salem doesn't know where that well they're starting to find out because we're making the national news for hideous things like going against a church but um oh gosh right yeah. they are salem is starting to get you know but the reality is that there is a different kind of mindset here it's like we're proud that we're independent and you know we we we're going to do it on our own and you know no, we don't want help, and no, we don't want that DHS building going up here to get services. No, kick the homeless down the road. I mean, it's like wow, yeah. There's a there's a whole pride thing about that. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I never thought I'd be in an instance where I'm actually like boosting for for Del Norte. Right. But <laughs> it does seem like everybody. We're all like, wow. Nobody. We got to do this together. Yeah. That really is a feeling down yep. there, left and right. Well, you had a real tsunami hit you guys. Yeah. And a couple maybe of times. that you know, because I know disaster does do some of that cohesion. I think I think that may yeah that may have been where a lot of our. And that, even even that sort of hangdog attitude and looking up to Brookings and, and how much, you know, we'll go up here because, you know, you don't have tax and you have Fred Meyer. Right. And 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 maybe that's when that was all born. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I know that there's a, for a while I did a podcast and uh, now I'm handing it off to one of the Redwood Voice youth uh, from the, uh, uh, the Delaware Historical Society. They had, I love going, it's in our old jail downtown oh, and it's just nice. wonderful and it's just chock full. I remember when it was a bunch of rusty things on a table and that was it. And since then it's just become this really neat thing. And uh, uh, they had, I forget why I was then in there, but uh, Karen, the woman who runs that, uh, and I know her last name, but I can't pronounce it and I'm not going to try. Mm -hmm. Good for um, you. But Karen's a, a doll and she showed me, uh, there was a, a, a drawer of cassette tapes they had. Hmm. And I said, well, this is it, this cassette, you know, these aren't going to last forever. Have these been digitized? And she said, no. And I said, well, would you like them to be digitized? And I'll do that for you if I can make podcasts out of this. Right. And I did three of them. And then I think, and then COVID happened. Yeah. But the, uh, uh, and we're just getting into getting that back again. One of the, the, the tapes, there was two or three tapes actually all bound together. Uh, where it was a broadcast and it wasn't KPOD, it was the other station, it was KD something and they were downtown and it was a live broadcast of a, oh, what was the, the what was, it wasn't the, they had a, it had a name, but it was basically a, a, an ad hoc committee to address like how we're going to rebuild after what happened. Wow. And this is in ninth, this is in October of 64, this wow. broadcast was. And it was like three or four hours, live meeting, public comment, people, everything, talking about what's going to happen that now. That is priceless. It really is. And a lot of the things that they wanted to address were problems that we still face. It was amazing. Yeah. They were talking about rebuilding downtown. That's mm -hmm. That was new. Mm -hmm. But doing so in such a fashion that people don't go out of the area to mm -hmm. go shop, mm -hmm. that we don't have a bunch of empty buildings mm -hmm. plaguing down. It's just the same yep. issues. Yep. It's like they rebuilt the same downtown. Yes. It's so <laughs> interesting to see that that historical footing there. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, one of our Redwood Voice uh, 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 youth media uh, kids is uh, is going to take on the 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 digitizing and the and the so podcasting. Let's talk about that because mm -hmm. you you obviously you know you as a as a nonprofit you have the ability to get grants and the stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, which we do as well. So how did so Redwood Voice is a youth program mm -hmm. that employs yes young people to be reporters and journalists and yada yada kind of. It, Redwood Voice began um, during the, uh, this is the, oh, I don't know how much this will mean to anybody, but the Building Healthy Communities era. There was a time the uh, California Endowment 
uh, very much uh, uh, was funding uh, something called Building Healthy Communities, and they identified unhealthy communities yep. around the state and started pouring money into them to do things. Yep. And, and Delnor County was one of those. And Redwood Voice was begun, gosh, it's been maybe a dozen years now. Uh, um, and it was begun as one of as a program in the Building Healthy Communities Initiative. And it has lived with a number of nonprofits over the years and a number of people who've, who've, who have directed it. Uh, but they would, uh, basically it was the, 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 its reason for being was to give youth voice, to empower mm -hmm. youth. Uh, and so the journalism is, a, is an easy way to do that. Let's get kids covering things, writing yep. things, and being opinionated and developing their own opinions right. about things. And so initially it began with um, uh, newspaper articles that mm -hmm. they write and it would end up in the triplicate. They'd have like every year, they'd have like a page in the triplicate and back when it was an actual paper and came out every right. day or just about every day. And uh, uh, some other things they did uh, when, the, when the internet sort of uh, became a thing, uh, which wasn't until really <laughs> the, the teens for <laughs> yes. us up here, but the uh, yes. uh, doing uh, like video content uh, mm. and uh, editorializing, but also covering things and, you know, um, just your basic sort of YouTube sort of content creation. And alongside that, um, after I got into, I got away from the photography and into radio and KFUG, uh, I started working with a, a summer program that was also part of the Building Healthy Communities initiative that was the uh, Youth Training Academy that uh, every, was about six weeks long and it happened every summer at the College of the Redwoods Del Norte. And uh, uh, they had different classes and different things, you know, community involvement and, and, and uh, I forget what others were, but there was the media. There was always media. And I started out as just doing a couple of days the kids would come in and we'd record things and yes. we'd do the sort of podcast things and I'd help them put together a segment for airing. And then, uh, and then I became the teacher for the whole thing subsequently. And for a couple of the two or three years, I forget how many years it was actually, uh, but teaching, uh, doing the, 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 the YTA in the summer and, um, video and audio and working with the kids, we'd have a project. Uh, one was just the history of beachfront park, which was the result of uh, the tsunami and so there's a lot of local history there too what how did beachfront park come about and we worked yep. and we researched and we went to the we went to the uh, historical society we talked to old timers who were there who knew remembered when it was being built and all of this and put together this uh this uh the goal was to create an article for the paper that if it were read aloud would also be a radio segment. So to, to, nice. to write the script in such a fashion. And we, that's hard. And we still strive to do that. Mm -hmm. We're doing video, mm -hmm. do video and have the, the voice of the video and the soundtrack of the video kind of be a standalone audio segment. And if it were written down, it could be an article too. And that way you can kind of cover your bases right. media wise. Uh, and after, after a few years, I guess Redwood Voice needed uh, another nonprofit sort of sponsor because it had to have a, a nonprofit to to get the grant funding so right. that it could keep going. And uh, the folks who were uh, running the Building Healthy Communities as that was coming to a close, were looking for a local partner who could take on Redwood Voice and take it beyond BHC. And uh, they approached me because I'd worked with them with the yeah. youth media teaching the YTA. And uh, and we went to we went out to lunch and they said, would you like to have Redwood Voice and, and have it be a part of KFUG? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And they said, it comes with funding. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> and and uh, uh, yeah, we started out with like $15,000 and, and I think two or three employees, one of whom was my son, who was in high school at the Perfect. time. And uh, it's grown just a whole bunch since then and it continues to grow. And uh, uh, as when we took it over. I really leaned into the the journalism aspect. Mm -hmm. There had been things about, you know, being opinion, doing this and what's right. it like and, you know, I, that's good and all, but mm -hmm. what we don't have in Del Norte County now, especially since the triplicate has become first, it was bought by the people who owned the pilot and they obviously didn't care about the triplicate and now it is it's still owned by them, but it's run by uh, a right-wing guy who used to be on the city council. It comes out one day a week. It's all his opinion. We don't have any news. There's a, a woman who is a reporter for the triplicate back when it was an actual paper who uh, writes for an online uh, thing called the Wild Rivers uh, Outpost. Oh, yeah, Jessica. Jessica, Jessica St. Andrews. But She's wonderful. She is wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and she was on our staff. Actually, we paid her for a while to work with the kids. Right. 
Uh, but then now she's married and she doesn't even live in Del Norte, even though she still does a great job because she yeah. knows Del Norte. Yeah. But she's not there. Yeah. And and we're a news desert. And I'm like, all right, well, let's lean into that and let's see what we can do. And we started doing a weekly newscast when we had just a couple of employees. Mm -hmm. And uh, that led to, to bigger and better things and more funding subsequently. And we were able to uh, uh, hire... Um, we also had somebody who was in, at the California Endowment who was from Del Norte and very much uh, a, a fan of Redwood Voice going way back. And she made sure that the funding kept coming in and allowed us to grow to what we have now, which is a staff of uh, five youth. Wow. Uh, five youth? Let me count them. Hold on. Uh, yeah, six youth, one of whom lives in uh, Humboldt now and is still a part of it and is kind of a, sort of the lead youth and, and coordinates everything from afar. Uh, but yeah, five, and five. And can also cover Humboldt, I would think. Exactly. And that's exactly what she yeah. does. And she also uh, uh, kind of uh, is in the hip pocket of Access Humboldt down there. Uh, they run the, uh, they have their own uh, LP station as well as the public access and a lot of, uh, uh community media, uh, initiatives that they have. And, uh, so and they air Redwood voice video segments from, uh, uh, that are online on the YouTube channel on public access TV in Humboldt. Wow. And the, our news is carried down there on mm -hmm. AZZH LP. And so she sort of facilitates that connection because it is a much bigger market and there's, yeah. there might be some other things there, but, yeah. uh. Uh, yeah, that's, that's where we are now. And, um, the, uh, there's also st directly ahead of us and I'm working toward this, uh, all this last week, working on the proposal for it. Uh, we've been asked to become a Klamath Promise neighborhood, um, grant, uh, a funded partner, which is a lot more the, the, tell me what that is. The Yurok tribe in Klamath got a promised neighborhood grant from the uh, federal government, uh, three years or two years ago now. Uh, to the tune of over five years, $30 million to make their life better. And what they're doing with it is remarkable. They are pouring that money into Del Norte. Wow. To, ev to lift everybody's boat in the rising tide. <sighs> it's amazing the things that they are doing. Uh, and and to understand that theory, you know, mm -hmm. that theory that if you just bring the level of the river up, everybody's boat exactly. rises. Exactly. And, God, that's and honestly, to, to get that sort of inclusion from a native tribe after, right? after everything. Right, after what they've gone right. through. It's yes. amazing. Yes, and it is. the uh, the people that they are, that are, are uh, uh, sort of doing it, one of the folks who's working for them, uh, um, handing out this money and, and, and helping all of these organizations count, he comes right out of the Building Healthy Communities Initiative. Mm. He was Redwood Voice's first hire oh. 10 years ago when he oh. was in high school. Oh. And so, yeah. So he wants to uh, get any better. It doesn't. It doesn't. And so yeah. we're, we're expanding uh, both into Klamath and into Smith River uh, for the Yurok and Klamath and the Talawa and Smith River. Yeah. I'm meeting this next week with the education department at the Talawa Daini Nation, Cheryl Steinruck, who was on the radio last week. Excellent. Uh, and uh, talking about uh, sort of growing along with them as they as they grow their own youth media capabilities yeah, and having Red beautiful. Voice help. Because so. we had some kids from the Talawa came up mm -hmm. for their summer program and toured the studio mm -hmm. and sat and re recorded stuff that we run on the radio. Now right they on. did some station IDs and they did them in their language beautiful. as well as... You know, an interpretation. I mean, it was just they did some some nice little. You know, if you have good thoughts, your life will be good. I mean, they nice proverb. And, yeah. You know, so it was. Yeah, it was great. It was just great. And I have heard that they're they've got like state of the art equipment. They are getting it. Yeah. Okay. And that's actually one thing that they want like Redwood Voice to help with is to set it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've Excellent. Seen, and I'm going like this week to see the studio space. And uh, oh, perfect. part of our KPN, uh, the Klamath Promise Neighbor Neighborhood Initiative is to have a presence in both uh, Klamath and Smith River. Perfect. And so we're hoping to have uh, Redwood Voice staff, one or two up there daily with the, with the Talawa and what they're, what they're hoping to achieve. They're wow. also expanding into the schools in Del Norte to sort right. of get kids uh, get involved in, uh, right. in media creation. And uh, it's exciting. It's exciting time. There's a lot going on there. And then Redwood Voice is very much a part of it. And that yeah. makes me super happy. That's cool. Well, it was about three weeks ago when you came up mm -hmm. um, and some of the staff, well, the board here and you and um, Jacques, Thank goodness for Jacques, because mm -hmm. um, he kind of put it all together. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and the principal at Brookings Harbor High, Tristan, 
and Jill Tavelli from Swalk. Mm -hmm. So we all kind of met in the high school and we're talking about, you know, what can we do for the kids in Curry, for the youth in Curry County? Because, you know, they're they're not there was all this equipment. They showed us the room mm -hmm. of equipment. And it just it made my it made my heart hurt. That right? it's just sitting there. Just sitting yeah. there, yeah. not being used. And, you know, and you've got kids who are obviously They've got energy and they've got perspective and they, you know, they could be trained to be journalists mm -hmm. and it hasn't happened yet. But, but the pieces are starting to, I think, starting to come together Yeah, because it, it makes sense. The youth are our future. It's even more than just, you know, that, that kind of Whitney Houston, <laughs> the youth and right. our future. So, uh, the youth, that's what. We're sort of in a, in the slow motion pivot with KFUG because of Redwood Voice and because of all of this nice. uh, to sort of uh, steer it into, make it into a youth driven community radio station. That's what I would really like to see. Wow. I'd like to see, I'd like to see a lot of live programming. I'd like to see kids mm -hmm. on the air. We have, mm, wow. Wow. Actually, most of our, our on air staff right now are, are youth. And by youth, I mean like 25 or younger. Wow. Uh, there's only a couple of old guys like me <laughs> playing <laughs> records and uh, or classic rock, which also happens. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, we've got a, we've got the Redwood Voice. They're there they're every weekday morning doing the news. But while they're also doing the news, they have uh, two hours that they're programming and they're on the air and they're nice. talking and they're playing music that I don't play. Uh, and then uh, Sunday nights, there is more youth programming as well. Um, so yeah, that's a... That just occurred to me how much we have in there. And that's exactly what we'd like to do. Right. Sort of make, I don't know. It's really important. It's important. Kids are, you say our kids are our future, but there are things that you have to do uh, to make that future a better future. Yes. And that is if we can get youth interested, involved, excited about being part of the community and not just consuming media, but creating it. Right. We've got a youth... Um, the fellow who's, who's going to take on the, 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 the history podcast, who enjoys going to supervisors meetings and, and city council meetings. And, and he likes that is that. a distinct personality. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And we've yeah. got the crew that we have now is really, I'd, I'd like to bring them at some point or have you guys come down and just Absolutely. meet them. They are incredible. They Absolutely. work well together. They are engaged. We just had uh, one youth, uh, uh, what youth he's, he's 20 now, I guess he is. Um, who uh, uh, filed and just finally got the, uh, the, 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 it all came to fruition, his first FOIA, his first Freedom of Information oh, Act. For, and it yeah. took a year, <gasps> took a year to get this report from the Coast Guard about a, about a diesel spill in the harbor. And, and he finally got it and he's working up the story. Good on now. him. And it just, it's, yep. and you know, and he was like, I didn't even have to, st I, he, every two weeks he's calling the, the yep. Coast Guard, hey, what's up with that? And yep. getting, and you know, Developing a relationship with this person yeah. at the other end of the phone and then getting, you know, uh, pushed up the line to figure out what happened. And it finally, just this last week, just a few days ago, we finally got the requ the report. And, and that kind of a win mm -hmm. just kind of gets that whole yeah. fire going again. That's what I said. Congratulations. Yeah. You're yeah. a journalist now. Look at that. Yeah. You know, that exactly. is exactly so. Well, it's you know, I had an idea. Why don't your kids come up here, your young people come mm -hmm. up here and like maybe give a talk at the high school or something wow. or or a talk at SWAC. I mean, there has got to be, there have to be young people out there who want to play. Yeah. There have to be, yeah. right? And, yeah. and we're not reaching them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look at the color of the hair of most of us here at at KCIW and, and it's gray. Yeah, I right. mean, <laughs> we're, li we're little on the old side, mm -hmm. you know? So we definitely need to bring in young people mm -hmm. and get them because they've got the energy that, well, we used to have. Well, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, you got to cast a wide net. There was a, a, a youth health summit last year in the, in the cultural center. Wow. At, uh, uh, and uh, we were there and tabling, right? Yeah. It's just a youth organization. Right. And a lot of kids came through and looked at what we had and we had our drone sitting out and we had some oh, funny stuff that. and things going on and, and uh, computer playing video and things like that. One kid, one kid yeah. was hired because of that. He's incredible. And I'm so glad to Bryce, Bryce Evans, and he's fantastic and yep. he's done great work for us. And 
And that's a win right yeah. there. You know, no, we were is. in front of several hundred kids. One stepped up and went, you know what? I think I'd like to do yep. this. And yep. that's the, then that's fine. That's the way it should be. Well, you know, if you think that you've got 500 kids and, and you're trying to, you know, show them that they could be, I don't know, part of an assembly line, you know, yeah. automobile <laughs> yeah, plant, right. you might get one, Man, right? I true. mean, that's so, true. you know, that's yeah. actually, those are not bad odds, that's, yeah. you know, no, you're right, bad you're odds right. at all. And it is fun. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole radio thing is actually really yeah, yeah. fun. You, know, <laughs> you kind of get to do what you really like to do. Yep. You know? yep. And if you can get paid, which the Redwood Voice, mm -hmm. they they get paid. They get paid. They get paid. Everybody, uh, there's one full-timer and uh, the rest are part-time. Uh, but $18 an hour, and uh, that will go up. We've, we've we started working uh, this week. We've got a huge project for the, for the mm -hmm. Klamath Promise neighborhood. They're having a whole week of uh, of uh, um, events. Wow. And uh, they've asked us and have hired us to, because it's the first Redwood Voice ever employee, hired us to cover all of these and to create these videos and do that. And and he's sitting, he's going, okay, well, how much do you guys make? I mean, 18 bucks an hour goes, ah, it's not enough. So he's budgeting how much he's going. Oh, wow. How about 25 an hour for this? Week? Okay, so fine. You're going to wow. pay the kids 25 an hour. And that's, that's in Del Norte, that's a livable wage. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's an incredible thing yes. for them too. But yeah. Uh, uh, well, and certainly for young people, because the the alternative is, you know, McDonald's, right. which is not going to get you the twenty five. Yeah, it'll get you twenty in California here Does soon it? if they, if that law stands up, yeah. that thing that uh, that Gavin Newsom's trying to do, and everybody's trying to fight because yeah. they don't want to pay more for their McDonald's and all right. that. But I all, you know, it also it's kind of it's kind of sad. It's something so important as journalism. I know. And you're still talking about a livable wage. You yeah. know, it's just like being a teacher or something that's yeah. really important for I society. I know. That's really important. Yeah. I know. But no, let's not pay them. I mean, no, that, huh, huh. absolutely not, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, it's just our future that they're but, teaching. But yeah. Maybe there's a there's a mid there's a mid path there, a midway, a middle I'm way. I'm sure we in, can find it. Well, in that in that you're not gonna make a lot of money, but right. you will make money. Yeah. So you have to sort of match that with your own enthusiasm. Yes. Okay, so if that's the one kid, if that's Bryce who yes. comes together, then then so yes. be it. That's good. I, I think that actually results so that makes you know quality journalism. And if you get to do something that you actually love mm -hmm. to do, you know, yeah. I, I mean, how many how many adults can say that that they actually get to do what they love doing? I'm on the air twice a week. Uh, KFUG Radio org. You can listen. You can listen anywhere on the what the 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 listen link there. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, one to three. And for a long time after the pandemic, well, during, starting during the pandemic, I started doing the, uh, a daily show mm -hmm. and lots of, you know, community involvement right. and talk and all of that. And, and four years of that burned me out. So just the end of this last year, uh, uh, I went to just this two, two, two mm -hmm. times a week and all I go through our vinyl collection and I just play records. Wow. That's it. And wow. I look forward to that oh, I bet. all week long. <laughs> yeah, I just I find bet. strange old records that we have. We got hundreds of LPs and and dig them out and play them and and play, you know, put the list to put the playlist afterwards online so people can see. Wow. And everybody seems to like that a lot too. Wow. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun doing that. By the way, I have a lot of vinyl. Do you? I do. Well, that I haven't told anybody about. Well, okay. Well, so. I'm just thinking if what? you want to look at it and take well, why don't what, you use it? Why aren't you doing a vinyl show? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> when I started, it was all vinyl. <laughs> no, that's him. Yeah. I mean, that's what my dad did. Uh -huh. You know, he spun the records, yeah, right? Yeah. But I, no, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but I have records. I'm just saying. Okay, no, I'm just you, saying. You, you, I can add to your library I, is always, what I'm saying. All anybody has, uh, I have records, I'll look at them. Great. You just tell me that, no problem. Great. So, um, you know, we're kind of getting down to mm -hmm. the last few minutes. Um, and, and of course, you know, I, so I do these great outlines, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I, I actually I write them, them yeah. down and I print <laughs> them out and I bring them with me just so that I won't get too far off into the weeds, uh -huh. you know, I'll be able to get myself back. I haven't even looked at this, so I have no idea where we are. So what, whatever. Good. <laughs> exactly. As it should be. I think. Oh, it's been such a great conversation. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, this is just fun. That's all this is. is you're definitely going to have to come back. Okay. So, so tell me if there are young people who are listening to this by any stretch of the imagination, how can they get in touch with you? What can they, you know, what can they do if they want to play with you? 
Well, um, oh, wow, that's a, there's a email, uh, operator at, which is a pun from the Matrix movies, it's operator <laughs> at kfugradio.org. Uh, you can give me a call, 707-954-5381. That is uh, 707-954-5381. That is our office line and my cell phone. So if you call right now, it's in the car. The, uh, <laughs> Good, because my cell phone went off <laughs> just a few minutes ago, so don't call me. <laughs> so just, yeah, you can email, call, you stop by the station. We're at 573 Elk Valley Road in Crescent City, right in the, in the heart of the meth district, as we say on the air. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> oh, oh, God, yes. Yeah. So sad. Oh, no, no. We've got, we have homeless people come out and walk through our property sometimes. It's mm-hmm. just, it's a it's a fun part of town. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, um, but you know, that's but very real. It's very real. That's very, very real. Yeah. And, uh, and if you listen to KFUG, you'll hear our chickens in the background. You'll hear big trucks going by. You'll hear all of that, but it's a, a community. You're just in a house. Yeah. Yeah. An old Del Nort house, you right? Open the door and you're in the studio, that's right? It. The living room is the studio. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a little, we're, we're different here. Yeah. 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 And you, you, you've <laughs> we got have like nice, an actual the studio. Foam on the walls yeah, and everything. The, wall. the other, exactly. yeah. Like, no, we've got. Which, you know, when I first heard about your facility, I thought, what an excellent opportunity for young people who want to get into this game mm-hmm. to see how it can be done and how it can be done. Yeah. I mean, these are two completely different yeah. and yet both work. I yeah, mean, it's, exactly. it's like just, it's remarkable. Yeah, it's it. not, not a cookie cutter industry. No, mm-hmm. no. Not at this level. No, no. <laughs> and, and the thing that we didn't get to, which we're not going to get to today because it's obviously it's a big subject, but it's, emergency broadcasting mm-hmm. because we know that it's it's a question of not if but yeah. when yep. you know we're going to have a disaster and at some point the radio stations are going to be all that's left standing mm-hmm. in terms of communication we got a little piece of that last year when the uh, we yep. lost power for a week in Del Norte County oh that's right because of the fire yeah yeah and it was it was radio. It was ran. It was it was the commercial stations that kept us on. Yeah. We had just gotten we got a grant last year uh, for fourteen thousand dollars and put in a backup generator, and that was all in and operational about a week before we lost power. Wow! And uh, uh, so we were on the air. We never went off the air. We stayed on, and uh, we were sharing the information because the the, the commercial station, the bi coastal station KCRE. Uh, is very much in tune with everything in Delaware right. County with the with the emergencies, and they would you know have regular broadcasts throughout the day, and we'd share that information as That's well. Right. That was really how information. I mean, you had to get up and drive across town and go to the high school if you wanted to get internet access, and I would do that in the morning to go download things, and for the, for the radio, I'd get up and right. drive over, park in the high school, log in. Download what I had to right. download to go back to the station. Right. And so, yeah, everybody was, that's exactly what it'll be like. That's yep. exactly what it'll need to So happen. we really need to be kind of thinking mm-hmm. along those lines. Like, what what can we do? How can we cobble something together? Mm-hmm. Because that that will be, the it'll be the only way of communicating. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has just been so much fun. I always say that that's what I want to do, you know, mm-hmm. when I have interviews i just want to have a good time Mm -hmm. and i always do so i'm (laughs) cool i'm just thrilled so you will come back i will very much i had a wonderful time thank you for having me and i want to thank our listeners for tuning in we love having the community involved so consider stopping by our studio on wednesdays at 2 p.m if you want to record a psa or if you have a two-minute soapbox piece you want to have aired. Oh, that's a good idea. I want to steal this Oh, one it's right so there. good. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we just put together... Oh, I don't have time. To play. <laughs> but it's a great show. Okay. We're located downstairs at 625 Chetco Avenue in downtown Brookings. I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community.